Hello, I'm Kelly Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory, where all this week my dad, Kenneth Copeland, is teaching us about God's covenant mercy. Psalm 136 tells us that His mercy endures forever. But we can set our hearts and our minds to receive God's faithful, loving kindness toward us when we do it on purpose, when we're intentional about hearing what He says and taking it with all of our mind, our will and our emotions and taking it into our heart because His mercy is there for us and we're learning how to call on that covenant mercy every day. As we realize our position as God's children and realize His overwhelming desire is to bless us, we can live the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. So get your Bible and let's join Dad for today's lesson. Now then, 2 Samuel chapter 9. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, this is why David, a man after God's own heart. Verse 1, Saul has been killed. Jonathan has been killed. Now, David and Jonathan had entered into a blood covenant. And they loved one another even as their own souls. David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him Hesed for Jonathan's sake. What's, what's working with him? This God covenant desire in him. Uh, see, let me remind you of something else. When David and Jonathan entered into that covenant together. Greg, you remember the, the, the garment exchange in the covenant ceremony or the gift exchange indicating that all that I have belongs to you if you need it. And all that you have belongs to me if I need it. And how can you tell the difference between a general and a sergeant by the coat they have on, the uniform they wear? <clears throat> Otherwise, unless you know them, <clears throat> you, can't, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> That's covenant practice. Yeah. Now, during the days of Stanley and Livingston in Africa, when they were looking for entrance into, into the continent of Africa and, and their, their helpers told them, said, you'll never get in there until you cut the covenant with, with, with uh, and and then they learned the first act was they found out that this king would cut covenant with them. Now, his uniform was a large spear and it had copper windings around that spear. That was his rank. It showed that he was king. And when Mr. Stanley entered into covenant, his, uh, his second and the king's second dropped 
a drop, each one of them's blood into a cup and they drank it. And then they went through the ceremony and all that. And now they're blood brothers. That king gave him that spear. He thought he'd been taken because he had stomach ulcers and he had a little goat and he drank that goat's milk. But that's what that king wanted. He wanted that goat in exchange for that spear. But from then on, wherever Mr. Stanley went, he walked into a, a village they all bowed down before him and treated him as king because he had the king's rank. Can you see it? We wear Jesus' robe of righteousness. <laughs> yeah, that's shouting ground, is it not? Now, Jonathan, the prince, he's in line to be king. The prince put his robe, his princely robe on David, took his armor off and put his armor on David and they had entered into a blood covenant together. This is the biggest thing in David's life. It is huge. Wow. Listen. Is there yet any that's left in the house of Saul that I may show him Hesed for Jonathan's sake? What's it doing? It's driving him to give. He, 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 he's in covenant and his covenant brother's been killed and Saul is dead. And, and he's, he, he's, he, it's, it's, just, it's just, just eating insides of him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did has it on this world. His mercy endures forever. Yeah. Huh. Oh, Lord. What about somebody that is in such a mental condition they can't even pray for themselves. Ha, ah, well, I don't know. What do you do? It's a loved one. You just put a smile on your face and you just lay hands on them, hug them up and say, son of David, have mercy. I'm calling for my covenant hesed with you. Hallelujah. Hesed. I'm calling for Hesed, sir. I need it today. Thank you. I thank you for it. And I praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Let's worship him. Oh, let's worship him. Father, we call on our covenant Hesed for this nation today. We call on covenant Hesed throughout this country. Your mercy endures forever. Son of David, Son of David, Messiah, manifest yourself among us. Manifest yourself to people that don't even know you. Show them who you are. Let them see Hesed. Let them see mercy. Let them see the mercy in your eyes. I remember it, sir. I remember it. Glory to God. I remember back when I, I, I first got born again and I, oh, I, you know, I thought, I didn't know I was a new creature. I didn't have any idea. And uh, I found two verses, not at right at the same time, but short span of each other. One of them said it, Christ died for the ungodly. And I thought, well, boy, I qualified for that. Well, so does everybody else. And his, then I found that the verses we're talking about, his mercy endures forever. I didn't know it meant Mahesed. I wouldn't have known what Hesed was if he said it to me. He said what? <laughs> No, Hesed. Oh, I never heard of it. All I knew was mercy. His mercy endures forever. And I thought, oh, glory to God. <laughs> Whoa, I really need to hear that. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we're not done yet. And 
And there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. When they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? He said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show Hesed of God to him? Ziba said to the king, Jonathan, yet he hath a, yet, had, yet hath yet a son which is lame in his, on his feet. The king said unto him, Where is he? Ziba said, uh, He's in a house and make here and the son of Amiel and Lodabar. And when the king sent and fetched him out of the house of make here, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. Now, I really don't think since he's showing Hesed on this young man, I don't think he sent, uh, 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 you know, just a couple of guys down there, you know, just run down there and get to, no, no. He's king, man. I think he sent a troop down there to get him. The little guy can't walk. I see him on sticks. His nanny dropped him when he was a baby and he couldn't walk. I think he said, I mean, I think they had flags on horses. Amen. And Mephibosheth thinks, oh, no. It's going to be just like they said. They told me he's going to eat me for lunch and that's what he's going to do. He's going to take, I'm the last one left and he's going to wipe out the whole bunch of us. Oh man, what's going to happen to me? Whew. What are we going to do? Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul came unto David, fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. David said unto him, Fear not. I will surely show thee. I will surely show thee. Hesed for Jonathan, thy father's sake. I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Did you get it? Did you get it? You're going to eat at the table with the king continually. You're not a poor crippled kid anymore. No, you're the son of the king. Glory be to God forevermore. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that I should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then he, he, you know, David didn't even pay attention to that. He called as I was all servant and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and all his house. He walked out of there richer than any of those other people. He not only owned all of Saul's, he owned all of Jonathan's land. He owned this, this, this young man in a moment's notice because of his hesed and because of his covenant with the king, glory to God, in a day's time, he became rich. And once again, once again, like his father, Jonathan, once again, this young man is prince of the realm. Because David put his robe on him and set him at his table. And now he's eating out of golden plates. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then said, verse 11, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that the, thy Lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. <laughs> we are seated 
raised up together, seated in heavenly places on the throne of grace because of God's hesed for us. Jesus, it is his right hand and we are at the right hand of Jesus sitting in that same place of authority. And the day is coming and I believe very soon all this thing will wrap up and Hesed will truly be acted out in our presence and we'll see him as he really is. Ah. Verse 13. Now we need to read that the 12th verse. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. <laughs> so, now here's Hesed, here's a gorgeous picture of it. Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem for he did eat continually at the king's table even though he was lame in his feet. Psalm 136. We're approaching the, the close of this. Psalm 136. Oh, you'll see it here. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, he is good, for his, his hesed endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his hesed endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for lords, for his hesed endures forever. To him alone who doth great wonders, for his hesed endures forever. That's the reason he does all these things. His hesed, his hesed. That's the reason he's doing all these things. Hallelujah. Verse six, to him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his hesed endures forever. To him that made great lights for his hesed endures forever. The sun to rule by day. He created this planet because of his hesed. He wanted, he's created, he wants to give this thing to somebody. He's already, he already has everything he needs. Or ever, he had a whole universe out there. And he created it all for one man and his wife. His hesed, his desire, overwhelming desire to give. That's what grace is. I said, that's what grace is. God's overwhelming desire to treat you, to treat me, to treat all of us with hesed, to treat all of us like sin never happened. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn for his hesed endures forever. Brought out Israel from among them for his hesed endures forever with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm for his hesed endured forever. To him that divided the Red Sea for his hesed endured forever and ever and ever. 26 verses of hesed. My, my, my. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Shout amen, somebody. Those of you there at home, I mean, just shout it to the high heavens. Oh, he has hesed on me. And that, I thought mercy, well, yeah, but, yeah, but it was hesed. And God, the Lord Jesus is hesed. He's El Shaddai in the flesh. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer in the flesh. He's Jehovah Jireh and we need him right now. He's our supplier in the flesh. They are saying that this COVID-19, that the effects of it on this nation will take 18 months to overcome it. Now, not the disease itself, 
but the, the effect on the economy and so forth. I don't believe that. I mean, that's, that's the general consensus, but I don't believe that. We have the Hesed of God. We have Jehovah Jireh. Yehovah Jireh. The one who supplies our, our, our Yehovah Jireh. Supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory by the anointing of Jesus. That's a good place to shout right there, too. That isn't just to us individually. Of course, it's for us individually. But we're a nation that was organized for one purpose because we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was set up in order to freely worship him. And he will never, ever forget that. I said he will never forget it. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.